so why learn Python? Well, Python is the duct tape programming language. I mean with that that it's very flexible and it's open source. So you can always share your code with others and they don't have to buy a license and they can simply run the code after installing free software. This is not the case with MATLAB, for example. It's also useful for very different purposes. You can use it in data mining, in GIS, bioinformatics, CFD modeling, handling text files, plotting, but of course also GIS and modeling that we are going to do in this course. For some facts about Python, it was developed in the early 90s of the last century and the developer was a Dutch guy called Guido van Rossum who worked at the Mathematics Center in Amsterdam and later worked for Google and Dropbox. Now he's retired. The development of Python is led by the Python Software Foundation. Python is actually named after Monty Python because Guido van Rossum was a fan of Monty Python's Flying Circus. And if you don't know about Monty Python then check on YouTube some videos and you'll have a lot of fun. Let's have a look at specific Python characteristics. Python is a general purpose language, which means it's not developed for a specific field, but it can be used for a whole range of purposes. It's also a high level language. In the previous lecture, we've discussed the meaning of high level. It means that it's closer to the scientist and the scientist doesn't need to know all the bits and bytes and technical things that low-level programming languages require. Python therefore also has an emphasis on the readability of code. It doesn't need all kinds of strange brackets and strange signs, but it uses, for example, indentations. If you write loops, it will look at the indented part of your script, and that will be defined as the loop. And it's very strict on indentation, so you should not confuse spaces with tabs when you indent. You will all learn this in this class. It supports also multiple programming paradigms. It's object-oriented with its functions and its classes. You will also learn that. It's imperative, which means you don't need to compile it, but you can just run the code and it will give feedback immediately and it has a very functional and procedural style of coding. It also has a dynamic type system, which means that you don't need to bother about declaring the type of variables, but Python tries to understand it from the way you declare it yourself the first time. And it has automatic memory management, so you don't need to take care of it. And the standard library of Python is very comprehensive and useful for many purposes. But in the next module, we are going to look at Python libraries, which is the real power of Python, where third-party libraries can be added to the comprehensive standard library, including added functionality for GIS. Now we're going to discuss a little bit of terminology. We will not discuss terminology of the concepts of Python, because that will come during the exercises in the tutorial, and it would be a bit boring to use a lot of slides to explain what a function is and how a tuple works. It's better to learn it by doing and with the explanations in the tutorial. But I will cover here some terminology on the technology that we use. There's implementations, distributions and IDE. Python implementations are coded in different ways. There is the standard implementation in C, the standard code of Python, but there are also alternatives developed for different purposes. An important one that we will use is IPython or Interactive Python. It makes it possible to execute Python in an interactive way, such as in Jupyter Notebooks, that I'll discuss later. There's also, for example, Jython, which is for uh, Java Virtual Machines. Then there are distributions. This is not just Python, but also different libraries that we often need, and uh, an IDE, and other tools that we need in combination with Python. And it's very useful to use a distribution because uh, it makes it easy to use different um, libraries and tools. Then there's the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. That is where you type your Python scripts. You can type, of course, your Python commands at the command prompt, but it doesn't make it a script. So you need an IDE to type your script. And if you use a text editor like Notepad, that would not have the functionality that you need to write properly your scripts. At least you need some syntax highlighting. 
The default IDE that comes with standard Python distribution is called IDLE. Another very popular one at the moment is PyCharm. Spider is completely open source and PyCharm is free, but not open source. There are also a few others that are used a lot. At some point your scripts will be more complex and you might work in teams on the same code. In that case you need to store your code centrally in a repository and take care of the version management. The most popular system for that at the moment is GitHub. In GitHub you can store the code, it can take care of version control, you can have access control, can be used for tracking bugs, users can file their bugs there. They can also do feature requests. And if you work in a team, you can uh, even include the management of tasks there, add a wiki page or uh, add web pages about the tool. And uh, until now it has been free for open source projects, but to have more up-to-date information about it, uh, check the current terms of GitHub. The last thing that I'd like to mention are notebooks. Notebooks are interactive websites where code can be executed. You can mix instruction text with fields where code can be entered and executed. Code such as Python scripts, but it has been developed for Julia, Python and R, which forms Jupyter as an acronym. It uses the IPython implementation, so Python can be executed in an interactive way. If you've installed the Anaconda distribution, then you can launch your Jupyter notebooks from your computer and it can use the libraries that you have installed. We will start, however, with running it online from a GitHub repository for this course. And there are tools to run these Jupyter notebooks online. They connect to the GitHub repository and run on a server. And tools to do that are Binder or Google Colabs, Colaboratory. In this module, we will use a Jupyter notebook about the introduction to Python. Links are provided in the platform. <music>